Welcome back to coverage of the Innistrad Championship, everybody. I am Ailey Loney alongside Cedric Phillips, and we have an absolute slugfest coming up next. It's going to be a repeat of what we just seen, but this time it's Kai Buda versus Christian Hauk, Rakdos Arcanist versus Selesnia Company. Now, Cedric, do you think we're going to see anything different to what happened in the last round, or is it going to be much of the same? I think there'll be one minor difference. Kai is going to win instead of William Huey Jensen. That's about the only <laughs> difference. Unfortunately for Christian Hauk, who I think has just run into a very difficult matchup here. Uh, as much as I love this Slesnia human stack, I just don't think it's particularly well positioned in this matchup. I suppose this deck could draw enough collective companies to be able to keep up, but Kai's deck has plenty of spot removal and interaction to be able to kind of mess around with what they're trying to do. Though I suppose if you have no lands, it makes things very difficult. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little difficult to do stuff if you have no mana to cast your spells, but uh, the second hand doesn't look much better, but at least we can cast stuff, so he's got that going for him. Uh, I think there's some upside on taking another mulligan here if you're Kai. If you keep this hand, you're almost certainly putting Soren back, um, mm -hmm. but if you mulligan this, you can mulligan into, a, I think, a totally functional five. No one likes mulliganing five cards, of course, but I think it's appropriate, but we'll see what Kai wants to do. Uh, for how hand is fine, it's not great, it's good enough. You've got a one drop. It's not the best one drop in this matchup, but you got a one drop. Um, you've got other things to do, so. Oh, it looks like he's actually going to put Kroxa back. Okay, as opposed to Soren. I'm a little surprised by that, but ignoring that, I'm also a little surprised that he kept this hand, but he does have plenty of interaction, so we'll see how things uh, do kind of shape up here with Kai on the play. Yeah, just go to the top of the library is kind to him and finds him that second land. Esper Sentinel, turn one. There's yep. another Haunted Ridge. It's a land. We'll take it. It's not the best, but uh, hey, it's something. Now, here's a question. When do we start attacking the hand and when do we get rid of the Sentinel? Uh, I think I'm fine just taking a lick from the Sentinel. You know, it's not the fastest of clocks. It is, well, <laughs> it gets annoying now that there's a Thalia. That's a really good draw. <clears throat> Yeah, that was an excellent draw set there for Hauk. Step one is just getting the beatdowns on here. Not surprised to see Kai take this. Now Hauk's going to play Thalia, and now I'm curious if Kai will respond or not. Yeah, because with Thalia out, or Thalia out, excuse me, you can't kill her. And she does tax all the non-creature spells, so is it time to kill the Sentinel? Will Kai just hang back? And get it the next turn round. Esper Sentinel is going to be the recipient of Unholy Heat. Draws a card for Christian Hauk, who finds a plane. So land number three online there for Hauk. Yeah, and that's pretty huge, that draw step there for Hauk off the Esper Sentinel. Really does turn the hand on now as far as Adeline and Ranger Captain Avios are concerned. One step closer to a collected company. Yes, co company does, cast, does cost five right now, excuse mm -hmm. me, but chances of that remaining to be the case, seem pretty low because at some point Kai probably has to get this value off the battlefield. Exactly right. Gonna look at the hand first with Inquisition of Kozilek and find a Giant Killer, Adeline, or a Ranger Captain of Eos. Now, what sucks the most here for the Arcanist well, player? Well, you can see Kai's face there. This is the same face that I'm making that you can't <laughs> see, which is this is a painful Inquisition because there are a couple different cards to select here. Ranger Captain of Eos and... Uh, Adeline, I think, are the two two cards in question here. I don't mm -hmm. think Giant Killer is really in the equation. Adeline's the scariest card. So mm. there you go. Another Ranger Captain. Adeline gets taken care of, though. Ranger Captain can go and find a one drop. Let's see what he fishes out from the library. Will it be another Esper Sentinel? It sure yep. will be. So now just needs to find land number four to get things rocking here. Ooh. Ooh. That is, yeah, it was a uh, no land, though. Yeah, that one is a stinker. It's going to cost four, yeah. first of all, and go blank. And second of all, not really the matchup that it's meant mm -hmm. for here against Lesney Human. So arguably Kai's worst draw step. Yeah. Not what he wanted to see. There's the Croxa. Does that do anything though right now? It just gets rid of something extraneous in the hand here of Christian Hauk. Yeah, the advantage here for Hauk is slight at this point. If Hauk's able to find maybe another land so he can play multiple spells in one turn, yeah, like and a Sun Tunnel Grove, and it's also a source of green mana. Nice. So, uh, yep, the advantage bar is moving on up, folks, because how can play multiple spells in a turn, and he's got green mm -hmm. mana available for Collective Company if and when we get to that point. So really good draw step there for Hauk. Sun Petal Grove will be able to turn on that Collected Company. Talia is going to get taken care of, so Coco will be a go-go with the fourth land coming on down. And who knows, might even find another Talia. 
Yeah, it wasn't gonna ca wasn't gonna cost five mana for long that collected mm -mm. company. So Thalia's got to get off. Thalia's got to be taken care of. It is taken care of now. But Kai is still in some serious trouble here because just two three threes, ignoring the text on Ranger Captain, which yeah. is quite a bit and quite good. Two three threes are just quite good right now. Yeah, and another Esper Sentinel bought to hand here. So Tax Man has come a knocking. There's a Blood Crypt. So land number three for Kai. It's one of the lands that hurts a bit though, so he's gonna go down to 12. A seasoned Pyromancer will hit the battlefield and will create some 1-1 one, one elementals. Just to block, the, just to gum up this battlefield a bit and keep that life total preserved. Nothing too great there off the Season Pyromancer and Blood Crypt and Dreadhorde Arcanist. Collected Company, I wouldn't be surprised to see cast main phase here. Yeah, there, are no, some why real, not? there are some real premium hits. Ugh, that is really not one? one of them, so. Uh, uh, that's a that's a bad break for Hauk and a good break there for Kai. Kai's still pretty far behind in this game, but to see that collective company be so poor, pretty good news for him. Yeah, that was not great. At least he found something, though. Luminarch Aspirin can put a counter on the Esper Sentinel to make the tax cost even more. Ranger Sentinel Captains are be, getting in here. I like it. Sentinel might be hanging. Yeah, I, I'm not yeah, too yeah, surprised yeah. to see that. Double block makes a lot of sense, too. You take three, go to nine. You get, some, you do, you get to make a little bit of a trade right now, too. Yeah, one of these uh, no non-creature spells for you cards taken care of. As we'll see a second Esper Sentinel hit the battlefield. Den of the Bugbear is the draw step for Kai. If he wants to get Sauron out, it will cost another two life to do so. And yeah, might need to cards. do it though, just to get that uh, just to get that vampire. Well, this is this is a little bit interesting here, I guess I would say. If there are enough cards in the graveyard, you can get back Kroxa. Yeah and cause how to discard the answer to Kroza. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's pretty good. You've stabilized the battlefield at seven. You've got the best thing going on. And now if you're Kai, you just kind of got to hope that it's a whiff here from how. Is it a whiff? It's another Talia, so not the worst, but not that great either. Yeah, but not the best. So that is kind of a whiff in this circumstance. I'm curious, is how many copies of Giant Killer do we have in the main? Just one. So that was the one answer to the Croxa until Brutal Cathar shows up to the party. If you're how can you rationalize any attacks here? You you do get a Luminarch Aspirant trigger. And I think that's what Hauk is thinking right now, which is, can I afford to just say, you know what? Everybody into the red zone, there will be some trades, yada, yada, yada. And I have a creature to play post-combat. Because what, it'll be three damage down to four? You attack with everything. Kai has a, like, if if, I, if you put the counter on Esper Sentinel and make it a 2-2, two -two, mm -hmm. you shove with everything. You probably just have to go 1-1 one, one in front of 1-1. One, one. So Elemental in front of Lumark Aspirant. And then probably Kroxa in front of, you can make an argument for Esper Sentinel or Ranger Captain. If you put it Kroxa in front of Ranger Captain, you go down to three. You have your Kroxa against two Esper Sentinels as far as you know. Right? Mm -hmm. You're at three, you have a 6-6 six, six against two two twos, and then Thalia comes down, and then it's a 6-6 six, six against three two-power creatures when you're at three, so you're conceivably facing lethal. This is a really hard decision to make if you are Christian to attack with everything, and he's not going to. He's just going to play Thalia and pass the turn back. I like it. Going to try and get the win with one swing. Den of the Bugbear is the land here for Kai. Has Sorin, but now Sorin's more expensive, so no life-linking vampire to save the day, just Dreadhorde Arcanist. As the playable Inquisition of Kozilek has nothing to hit right now. Big draw step here again for Hauk, as Kai is continually trying to stabilize. That's Ooh, pretty good. That's, that's pretty big. Good. That's a big that's O. A, that's a 11-11? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Croxa, say hi. Yeah, that's not what Kai wanted to see. <laughs> Oh, that's glorious. Put a counter somewhere too. Hamlet Vanguard has impressed here this weekend. Yeah. I was I wasn't super sure about this card, especially if you top deck it and there's no battlefield, but in situations like this, absolutely awesome to see. So now here comes Soren. Yep, that's the fear, right? Because <laughs> now cards. two cards are coming. Ooh. 
You just gotta, you just, nice. if, if you're Kai, you just gotta hope that he whiffs on those hits. Mm. Use a vampire in the battlefield. Can jump in the way of one of these creatures. Can gain some life. Still think how Kai get heavily advantaged right now because he's got a lot of Definitely. good draws too. Yeah, that. Ooh boy. Oopsies. Yeah, that one's a mistake. That one's a mistake by Kai playing in, playing the Blood Crypt untapped with the thought that he could play Inquisition of Kozlek, but he can't because of Thalia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's leaking away two points there, unfortunately, for the German Juggernaut. What's an all-out swing here equal? Uh, four blocks, biggest creatures, one, two, three, four. There is going to be some lifelinked work in the equation. So let's put let's put Kai at a... Uh, seven. A, a theoretical seven because of mm -hmm. lifelink. An all-out swing is probably 11-11 gets chump like by 1-1. One, one. Croxa eats something, 2-3, doesn't get the best of blocks because Esper Sentinels are 3-3s three now, and then Dreadlord Arcanist doesn't really get the best of blocks either, so I can rationalize attacking with everything here. I can, I can see it. I guess 1-3 goes in front of Thalia. It might just make some sense just to attack with just Hamlet Vanguard. I don't love it. You like to do more than that. <laughs> Well, it would get some blockers out the way, but I like it. Push All the right. big red button. Christian Hauk is saying, okay, I've had enough. Let's get this show on the road. Swing with everything. So there's your first block. There's your second block. You get 6-6 six, six in front of one of the 3-3s, three, uh, and then 1-3 in front of a 3-3, three, three, and then you're taking 5. My math is... my math good? Just do that there. You take 6. It's because he took 2 that Hauk can make this attack. <laughs> Yeah, thinking he could cast Inquisition. It's pretty brutal. Uh, oh, but cool remember, attention. remember the lifelink. So again, Kai mm -hmm. is at seven in quotes. Yeah. So when all is said and done, Kai would go down to one. That is correct. Okay. And he'd keep his two, three lifelinker. So yeah, has that's Hauk, pretty big. Has Hauk made a poor attack? All, all Kai loses here is the one, one elemental. That's it. Yeah, that's not terrible. That's not that's not awful. Next turn, there'll also be Den of the Bugbear to jump up in the way of something. Eh, potentially. So potentially. Kai could, Kai could stabilize here. There there are good draw steps here for Kai too. Mm-hmm. And, and at also the very Sauron able to help filter a little bit. Granted, yep. won't be able to get anything but land off the top of the library, <laughs> otherwise it hurts. Yeah. Kai gonna confirm. I think just to make sure these are the blocks he wants to make. So target creature control with a plus one, plus one counter. Indestructible, sure. So this happens, this happens, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Kai loses the elemental. There's the battlefield. Chump blocker. Hmm. Sorin can also make another... Vampire with a minus two. I don't know if you'd be interested in that right now, though. Because there's no man lands to worry about. You just have four creatures on the other side of the battlefield, and you've got a bunch of chumpers that can jump in the way. And Crox is, Crox is eating ahead. all of the little guys. Yeah, I mean, you're going to assume if you're Kai that your opponent's card is a brick. If it's company, you can't win anyway, so don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and what else would what else would Christian be holding? Is the question you'd ask if it, and if you drew any if you drew any creature you would have played it. So if I'm Kai right now, I say okay, the card in hand is just almost it's like 99% to be a land, whatever. So I'm gonna take my turn with that in mind and figure out what's the best thing I can do here. And, I, and I'm with you. It might be it might be vampire. I mean, I'd like to keep Soren around, but it might yeah, be Soren. Vampire. It would be great if uh, Kai could get himself into a position where he's gaining a little bit of extra life. Yeah. But then I think we'd see Christian hold back on the attacks until he's able to run Kai over, basically. Really curious if Kai can afford to make an attack with the 2-3. To, like, go up to 3, and then you make yeah. a 2-3. You make a 2-3 vampire, you play a 1-3. Might be better just to just to not attack at all. I bring my own army. Yeah, okay. it's gonna hang back. Raven Inspector, not a bad draw, does That's... give the clue token to give another look on top of the library here for Christian. There's, there's a lot there's a lot to like about this draw. It's a body mm -hmm. when your opponent's at one, it's a new card, and it's oh. another spell. Yeah. Lots of like. That's lots of like about that draw. Very, very good. Yeah. 
Brutal Cathar are able to come on down and grab Crux, the Titan of Death's Hunger, making attacks even better for Christian Hauk. What a draw off of that clue token. Good job, Thraben Inspector. Yeah, one of the best white one drops of all time paying off there. All right, so Kai is effectively at five, can take three and double block so, one of these pesky creatures. Yeah, you nailed it. So there's your there's your easy block, there's your double, and here's your single. So gonna lose both the Arcanists. Gonna lose <laughs> you're just gonna he's just gonna have a vampire left. Yep. Up to two. I don't even know what the best draw is now. Uh I not promise that. it's not thought that's season. Not it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's not gonna cut it, unfortunately. Even with the den of the bug bear available to block, it's just bad news bears. For the German juggernaut, as we're gonna go to sideboards here and Wow, I mean, game number one, you kind of have to win it as a Selesnia player because I'm pretty sure things get a little better for Kai post-board. Well, Kai's got a bunch of goodies to bring in. You can see the graphic. That's going to assist us here with Feed the Swarm, Noxious Grasp, Flame Bless Bolt, Colgun's Command, two copies of Witch's <laughs> Vengeance, and a Chandra, and able to get some lesser cards out. We saw how poor that Go Blank was in that game. Yeah. Soren's not really at its best. Soul Guide Lantern's horrible. It's not a Crux matchup. It's not really a Thought Seize matchup, so... Bad cards going out, some really good cards coming in. On a house side of things, a little bit of removal here and there with Skyclave Apparition. Uh, rest in peace because Kai's deck does use the graveyard as an extension of his hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the portable hole is just kind of a... It's 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 utility. It's not great. There's going to be times when it's great. There's going to be times where it's horrible. Uh, but I can understand why, why you would bring it in. So um, Kai's deck gets appreciably better after sideboard as opposed to house, which just gets some minor, minor tweaks. Both players almost happy with their selections. Christian just making one more addition there. Another portable hole is going to join the fray. Talia's getting cut down a little bit. So we're going to go into game number two here between these two German superstars. And let's see who can improve their record here at the Innistrad Championship? Let's take a look at these opening hands. Wow, that's a really nice one there for Hauk. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice hand for Hauk. It's a slow one out the gate here for Kai. So I think he's, you see the the look from him of- <laughs> Yeah, yeah the really, handshake, he's like, mm -hmm. I mean, he's on the play, but boy, is he slow out the gate, right? So, yeah. and this is even more difficult because if Hauk doesn't have Esper Sentinel, See, it's not bad, right? You start mm -hmm. with Fable Passage. Okay, Hauk does nothing on one, or maybe it's Thraben Inspector. Sure. You sacrifice the Fable Passage, you go get a Swamp Nine Inquisition you on two. But because it's Esper Sentinel to start, the Inquisition is going to net Hauk a card. And that's mm -hmm. pretty darn frustrating. So, um, <laughs> I mean, at least you get to, at least you get to see the card. <laughs> sure, sure. If we're keeping it positive, you are right. You get to see how dead you are. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, he's going to keep it, much to his chagrin, but let's jump in here and get this underway. Fable Passage down, Esper Sentinel as the start here for Hauk, and Kai doesn't love to see it. It's a really good first draw set there for Hauk as well, and Thalia's Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Not a bad draw step there for Kai and Fatal Ooh, Push. Nice. Unfortunately, can't do two things this turn, though, with the Tap Lands, Fable Passage, and Haunted Ridge. And there comes the Luminarch Aspirant. Are we going to push now? Well, I guess wait for the trigger. Right. Big. Yeah. Going to use my head here. Use my noggin. Now mm -hmm. are we going to push? Yeah, I mean, got to preserve life total, right? Got to get this Esper Sentinel off the battlefield. So that you can Inquisition freely next turn. Yeah, and this is, you can just see, just Esper Sentinel, just all by itself. Just yep. so annoying. Mm. Just so darn annoying. Even more annoying in multiples. Okay, Skyclave Apparitions, the draw. Kai gonna sack that passage. I gotta imagine it's gonna be a red mana. Yep, wanna be able to get Pyromancer and Chandra going. Another all Thought right. Seize. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Look. So what you see here, if you're Kai, you see, oh, a lot of three drops, no third land. Okay. <laughs> I like his reaction there. 
so there's there's a lot to weigh here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go one by one. There's multiple copies of Adeline, so you really can't poke a hole in that. Aspirant is something to do if he doesn't draw a land. Thalia's Lieutenant is something to do if you don't draw a land, but you're probably gonna go to Luminarch Aspirant as opposed to Thalia, given what the battlefield looks like. Ranger of Captain of Eos can bring a card along with it. There's a myriad of options there for how, but that's something you have to think about if you're Kai, if a third land is drawn. Then Skyclave Apparition, there's nothing for it to kill right now. There are cards in your hand that it could kill. Example, Magmatic Channeler. So there's also this risk of like, do I want to play the Channeler and it can get Apparition? Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a lot of things to think about with that Inquisition because the game can go a lot of different ways depending on if a land is drawn. It's not. It's a collective it's company. not. Ruh row Kai's going to be happy about that. Thalia's Lieutenant will hit the battlefield, put a counter on Luminarch Aspirant, who's going to start practicing self-love, self-care, giving the counter to itself and swinging in for three. And the plan there, as unholy heat as the draw, was please don't draw a third land. Yes. And if I can make it out of this turn, just that one turn without drawing a third land, I'm probably going to be okay, right? And now Kai, I think, is doing okay in this game and starting to, it's early, but I'll say start mm -hmm. to turn the corner a little bit. Fourth land would have been super, super nice, but having a seasoned pyromancer here, being able to filter through the cards in hand, going to discard a couple things. Goodbye, Chandra. Ugh, still no fourth land, but two unholy heats, which are turned on right now. So six damage coming via those two spells. And how do you want to use a Chandler, if at all? That's really important that how draws a certain land. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, we got his him. we got the first reaction out of him. He has yeah. not been terribly emotive all weekend, and that's incredibly frustrating. And with you. good re hey, with good reason. I feel you, buddy. Oh my goodness me. Super unfortunate for Christian Hauk not finding his land. Kai also not finding his fourth land, but uh still looking a fair bit better at the moment. Yeah, because it's so much worse for Hauk to miss there than it is for Kai. Mm. Uh, Hauk is the kind of deck that doesn't want to play, like, he doesn't want to play in the long game. That favors Kai, right? Yeah. And so as we, as we kind of, basically, the point I want to illustrate here is the third land now, if it's drawn next turn, it may be too late, yeah. right? Because now, yep, Oof. if Kai finds the land, then he's got a Planeswalker on the battlefield, he's got ways to defend the Planeswalker, like all this other stuff, mm. where the third land, now the Unholy Heats are on, so whatever you play with your third land, okay, kill that, untap, draw, blah, right? So it, the third land really needed to be there. Truth be told, that turn. Yeah, and I like Kai's thinking now. He's seen that Christian is in big, big trouble, and he's just going to clear the battlefield here, potentially, and just start smacking. I'm yeah, if he, wants, if he wants to get turbo aggressive, he can. And, and your Chandler is a 4-4, four, yeah. four, so yeah, you can just go, all right, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8, yeah. Put you to 10. Your 3 drops aren't that great defensively. And if you brick, it's over. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's just over. It's just over. Not like this. Christian is thinking to himself, very unfortunate draws here. Just the Esper Sentinel down to chump lock. You're going to jump in the way of this magmatic Chandler, or does he want to try and get something off the battlefield here? Nope. Going to try and stem the bleeding. Down to six he goes. Does he find land? It's Luminarch uh, Aspirant. That's not going to cut it. Inquisition of Kozilek. Still no more lands. You got to check here just to make sure if you, if you, if you wish his vengeance, you don't want to mess yourself. You don't want to yeah. mess yourself up here a little bit. You're pretty... There's, there's two humans on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty... <laughs> You're pretty far ahead. <laughs> take a moment, make sure. Don't do that. <laughs> yep. Down to two goes Hauk. He's going to be inquisitioned here. Kai's going to take a look and see what problem cards there are. Snackle <laughs> Apparition is the target, and we're going to go to game number three here. And yeah, even Kai's shaking his head. He can't believe it. Well, for Hauk there, when it rains, it pours. Never drew the third <laughs> land as an aggressive player. I've been there, right? You keep you keep a two, especially that situation. I've been there for a very long time, right? You keep a two lander. Yeah. You're yeah. you're on the draw. You have an Esper Sentinel. Sure, that's gonna almost certainly draw you cards. <laughs> Assuredly, I'll draw a third land. Yeah, right. Statistically, it's very likely I'll. The find numbers a third land. dictate it's coming. <laughs> Eventually, okay, Eventually. never. Yep. Nope. You kind of have to survive to the eventually, but I do enjoy that both players were able to have a bit of a chuckle about that. They haven't suffered sense of humor failure just yet, so. 
We're all good. Let's go. Game number three. Christian Haug and Kai Buddha. Christian was our final remaining player undefeated. Is now sitting at eight and one and would love, love, love to be at nine and one. But he has to get through the German juggernaut, the Hall of Famer, the former world champion in Kai Buddha. Not an easy task. How can I love with this hand but can't send it back? You're playing against a deck that has a lot of discard. So you're not going to mulligan looking for one, two, three, in my opinion. So you're just a little slower out of the gate. If you're mm -hmm. Kai, probably pretty happy. You don't have to worry about Esper Sentinel again. So I have a question for you, Cedric. Hit me. Christian's hand's not that great. You said so. But there are three Actually, lands in it. How yeah. much of an effect does game two's draws have on game three? Zero. Zero. That was then, this is now. That's all. I don't, that, that has no effect on him whatsoever. The hand is playable that he's kept mm -hmm. here. It's not It's not the top of, of his hand, like of his range of opening mm -hmm. hands. We've seen those of Sentinel and Nathalia, yada, yeah. yada, yada. It's a fine hand, but you know that your hand is functional against a deck that has a lot of discard. So you keep and you just play. Cool. That's it. One game at a time. Inquisition of Kozilek gonna take a look ski here and find Apparition Adeline times two yet again. And yep, can't, can't, poke, can't poke a hole. In the, Adeline, in the Adeline puzzle here, because he has mm -hmm. two. So there's some comfort in there. Yeah. There's an answer in the Noxious Grasp, though, for the next turn round, when she does eventually hit the battlefield. So let's take some comfort in that. One of the copies is going to get gone, and Unholy Heat is eyeing out that Aspirant. Hey, Kai waiting. Okay. Oh, let's go. Adeline, Resplendent Cathar, coming on down, and the Holy Heat in response, Luminarch Aspirant taken care of, and no attack trigger here to get that 1-1 one, one token. Now this game looks a lot more like how Kai would like to draw it up. There's no Sentinel, yeah. there's no Thalia. He has to kind of just cast his spells and do his stuff, not really worry too much. And now if you're Hauk, your hand's not very good. Now, fourth mana source is nice in case you draw collective company number one, but for the most part, your hand's not particularly good. You got an Aspirant, which is just a little baby. Giant Killer, which isn't <laughs> doing all that much. Uh, Apparition doesn't have a target right now. It will down the road. But yeah, you're in Kaja 21, right? This isn't what this isn't. This isn't how you want it to look. Because again, the longer the game goes, the better it is for the red black player with planeswalkers and everything else. Big thanks here from Christian Hauk, deciding what he wants to deploy this turn. As you mentioned, Giant Killer's not doing a whole lot, but can come down and be annoying. Hold the land, hold the land, hold the land. Tap some stuff. Mm, I kind of want to hold it. Make it seem like I have a spell. <laughs> land off the top here for Kai Buddha. There's a couple of options this turn round. He's going to go to Culligan's Command, though. And we'll see the discard. Gross. Mm. Brutal. So no more Skyclave Apparition to deal with, no more Luminarch Aspirin to deal with, just a 2-3. Which is manageable. Portable Hole has no targets right now. Giant Killer yeah. gonna swing on in. Portable Hole, that one, it's uh, it's kind of like I said in the sideboarding. It's, it has its moments, mm -hmm. but there will be times when it's quite poor too. We'll be able to get the Dreadhold Arcanist here. Season Pyromancer is free and clear. There's I a second Coco. copy of uh, Dreadhold Arcanist. Temple Gardens, the draw, no Coco yet for Christian Hauk. I got Portable. bad news. I got bad news, Hauk fans. It's not I looking hot. I got bad news. Kai is ahead with a lot to do with his mana. Another mm -hmm. Arcanist. He's got a Den of the Bugbear. There's a Pyromancer in the graveyard. He's got no shortage of things to do. Again, if, if it's if you're rooting for Hauk, he's got to peel off like running Cocos right now. Yeah. And they got to be really good. Send energy off. That's and not a bad. And Apparition at the top. That's that's all right. That does prevent the Dreadhold Arcanist from swinging. Giant Killer would do the same thing. So who do you target here? A Season Pyromancer that gets you value later? Or is it the Arcanist? I think I like the Arcanist. Yeah. Nice. 
<laughs> I hey, give, like me it. give me a taste. I like it. Give me a little taste. Just a little love tap. Yeah. And for two, down to 17 goes Kai, another den of the bugbear. Got plenty of those now. Yeah, one of the things that's nice about this Rakdos deck, Creature Lands. Not every deck in the format gets to play them, but this deck does, and it plays them quite well. And Den of the Bugbear may be the best of the bunch. Yeah, two bodies. Pretty decently statted land as well. Can block for you. Seasoned Pyromancer from the graveyard will be exiled, creating two more elementals. Eh, as for Sentinel. You're a little late. Yeah, you kind of missed I'm your all, whole time, bud. I'm already torn. That <laughs> card, not so much on turn eight. Oh, you just gave our ages away. Because I understood that reference. Natalie and Bruglia, baby! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Flame Blast Bolt's kind of nifty. Can kill the Skyclave Apparition, get a 2-2, or kill the Esper Sentinel. The text isn't really that relevant right now, though, with all this mana up. Yeah. It's just a tough road to hoe right now if you're out. Again, it's it's got to start with collected companies, plural. I hate to say, but I think mm. that's I think that's really the best way back into it. It's just yep. kind of running companies. All right, Hauk, if you have a one time left in reserve, now's a good time to use it. Let's see. Giant killer on the end step, gonna tap down the seasoned pyromancer, allow his creatures to get a swing in. It's a Tali's lieutenant. That's right, not well, too shabby. You could do worse. You can make these creatures a little bit bigger, the Sentinel and the uh, the Giant Killer. Mm -hmm. Not the Apparition, of course. It's an, uh, Apparition's an honorary human. Yeah, yeah. It looks human. It was human at one point, right? It's true. It's true. It's, I guess. It's just haunting people and turning them into little things. Kai make it... Kai kind of taking it... Eh, I don't know if I want to say conservative. I mean, you activate Den of the Bugbear, it just gets tapped out by Giant Killers. You're not really doing much there, potentially, mm -hmm. I guess. But the approach Christian's go. taken so far has been to swing with this killer, so I'm interested if it'll sit back now. Yeah. I guess you can go attacks. You can... Kai can declare attack step. Iron Mancer gets tapped. And then Bugbear gets activated. Or maybe just sits fine. Because if Bugbear... Bugbear into a 3-4 now is no good, so... Mm -mm. Flame Blast Bolts on the end step here for Kai. Where does he want to send it? I guess it's going to be the Sentinel, but no, nope, we're going to go for the Skyclave Apparition. Can pay the hey two. And a 2 2 joins the battlefield of Kai. Still, still find Kai to be slightly ahead here. Better draw mm. steps on average. That's a whiff. Yuck. Okay. <clears throat> we might just be even up. No, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much for how to get back into this. That plane doesn't help. It's quite keen to just keep dropping lands here. Yeah, okay, it's, that's, that's a magic card. Yeah, let's let's start open some snoots here. This Croxa Titan of Death's Hunger gonna come on down and do three. Can he escape it? Yeah, he's got enough yeah. to win. So yeah, you can you can do this. Hawk's gonna take six, right? Both triggers. Mm -hmm. But you do have it. You, you do have it on lock in quotes. Thanks to uh, thanks to Giant Killer tapping it. Yeah. So there is that. Christian Hawk still holding steady here, just biding his time until we're he can go... find that collected company. We're going to go back slight advantage to Kai. Mm -hmm. Come on, green card. Come on, green card. Come on, green card. Ah. It's right, another well, thing in the way. It's okay. Gross Lieutenant, Gross presumably Sentinel. Mm -hmm. Yep. Giant Killer has Gross. Okay, Brick. <laughs> what are these? All right, you know, I'm love. Actually, I'm loving this. I'm loving this, actually. <sighs> Cause now I'm just toggling in the advantage bar. I had I had slight advantage, Kai. I'm bringing us back to even now. Okay. I'm just toggling it. <laughs> it's every it's draw quite, step. It's quite ludicrous. Cause this happened in the first game as well. I think Kai just drew 
<laughs> to, to hand disruption spells. And yeah, Christian was kind of hellbent, so not the draws uh, he's looking for. <laughs> now, if Kai finds, Kai finds a planeswalker, we're probably done. Yeah. Chandra Soren. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're getting frisky. Yes. Nice. Okay, I like it. Okay. Okay. Swing time. Are, are we getting frisky? Go with all the two power least creatures. Yeah, well, the one... they'd bounce off the Sentinel. Yeah, if you send in Pyromancer, if you send in Pyromancer, oh, you're doing like that. It. Yeah, you're doing that basically to say, I don't care if it dies because I can make two more one ones. Mm hmm. Because the attack Zespers... back is not hell of an impressive. No. Esper Sentinel, okay, eat there. Aspirant, nothing. So you take three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight, eight. Yeah. I like this. Dude's going sideways in for a bunch of damage, down to four. Goes how? Uh... Uh... <laughs> These draws have been terrible. <laughs> All right, so... You play, mm -hmm. you play Rip, that shuts off Season Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. You probably have to put the counter on that. Uh, I was thinking Aspirate, not positive. Okay, so Sentinel. Giant Killer is on lock for Kroxa. We're done. Mm -hmm. Are we. Ooh. Hey, that's humans. humans. Just name that's... humans. So that kills Lieutenant and Aspirant. Dude, draw and Sentinel. Com draw company one time! Never mind. <laughs> you could pay the four. Which is vengeance going after the humans here. So if you tap Croxa, Sentinel blocks. I don't think this is over, right? Am no, I wrong? Sentinel's, Sentinel dies. It's a human as well, isn't it? No, it's, oh, a, yeah, but, it's, but it's, it's a 1 1. It's a, right, right, right. It's yeah, so, so you tap Croxa. Uh huh. With Giant Killer. These Fozos attack. I mean. Do you go to one? Question mark? Probably not. How do you survive the next attack? You need a combo. Draw company. Okay. Well, I, company. Oh, well, you actually can't. You really, that's actually not good. So company is actually, this is weird. It's like not good now because you draw company. You can't company plus activate a giant killer. Huh. Pretty sure. Let me make sure I'm not losing my mind. Giant killer is two step. Okay, then you can. I was thinking it was three for some reason. Okay, so you can. Oh, okay. All right, so. Yes. Giant Killer taps Kroxa. Mm -hmm. That's your two mana. You draw company. Uh... You have to. So it's it's basically I have to draw company. Come on. No! Gosh. Why doesn't he ever draw company? Why? Come on. Where is Why? this card? Why doesn't he ever draw company? That's so frustrating. I feel for you, Christian. That is just super, super unlucky. Feed the swarm is the draw. Uh, Not going to matter, though. Den of the Bugbear is going to pop on up. Croxa is going to get tapped down, most likely, and we are going to see Kai Buddha pick up the win here against Christian Hauk. Oh, I really, like, I really liked his play of going to one. Mm-hmm. Because if he draws company there and hits appropriately, he can like come all the way back, or yeah. at least get close to coming all the way back, but never ever drew company!